just in time. Yeah, just like clockwork, you turn up yeah, when food I is ready. Yeah, literally smell it through the village. Mm -hmm. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I'm ready, are you ready? I'm ready, I'm, <laughs> I was born ready. <laughs> Ciao and buonasera. Today I will be cooking a variation of the classic uh, parmigiana, which normally is cooked by using aubergines. I will be using uh, chicken breast instead, and uh, obviously parmigiano. <laughs> and uh, it's uh, just as delicious, and I'm sure that uh, you will enjoy it. I'll be cooking for two people, and I've got the equivalent of uh, two chicken breasts here. Um, you can buy it already sliced, but if you don't, find it by all means you can slice your own if you have a look this is what i did earlier literally with a knife go through it and uh, you can easily do it yourself you can also use uh, turkey by the way here i've got three tablespoons of plain flour and i will be adding a little pinch of salt to it and i'll do the same with uh, six tablespoons of uh, breadcrumbs which uh, i've already got ready here I will be adding a few herbs to my breadcrumbs uh, and uh, one um, is going to be basil which I'm now um, picking here and also I will be using a little sage. You can also use um, dry herbs if you like, you do not have to use fresh, but fresh would be better. I've also got a couple of uh, little pieces of uh, rosemary and with the help of a knife uh, just uh, give them a, a good chop all together. And I will be adding them to the breadcrumbs, not to the flour, the breadcrumbs. Also, I will put a little pepper on the breadcrumbs. And I will sprinkle a little parmesan cheese as well. Not a lot, maybe something like uh, 10 grams. Mix them all together with a spoon and the breadcrumbs are ready. Next job is uh, to break in a couple of eggs in a different bowl. Again, add a little, tiny little amount of salt. I've got here a lemon, which I used for the other day when I used the zest. So I'm gonna cut that in half. And uh, rather than uh, waste it, I'm going to be using this. And I will be squeezing half of it in my eggs. Don't make the same mistake as me and uh, make sure that uh, you do not have the pips in it. And beat them with uh, a fork very quickly, literally 20 seconds. So far so good, that's simple and uh, it's gonna stay that way. I'm going to be making uh, intelligent use of my hands so I will be using my right hand for the chicken and I'll start it uh, by dipping it in flour one side and then I turn it the other side so that it's all coated. Dip it in the egg Again, one side and the other side and finally in the breadcrumbs. One side and the other side. Always only use uh, your right hand, which means you can use your left hand to do other stuff and place it on uh, an oven tray, which uh, I have already lined up with some baking paper. And here they are, they're all done, and uh, you will see that uh, I have got uh, a little bit of uh, breadcrumbs and egg left over. Most probably get away with uh, one egg, by the way. I purposely always make more, because uh, since when the children were little, they used to love the leftover in uh, a bit like a, a fritter. So what I always do, I make a little bit extra, always better to be on the safe side anyway and then I'll mix the egg with uh, any breadcrumb left over and uh, I'll make a little fritter and I'll put this uh, in a little corner here with the tray with the rest of the chicken and one last touch is to add a little olive oil on top of the chicken before it goes in the oven and uh, we are ready the chicken will go through two different cooking cycles the first time uh, on its own as it is in the oven for 20 minutes uh, at a temperature of 190 degrees. If it's a fan oven, you can up it by 10 degrees to 200 if you got a normal oven. After 20 minutes, I'll get it out and then I will continue the recipe by adding some uh, tomato sauce to it and uh, completing it before it goes back in the oven. <laughs> so see you in 20 minutes. Perfect, 20 minutes have gone and uh, the chicken is uh, cooked. 
I should have actually added that uh, this is a meal uh, on its own right as it is as well, so you do not have to do the parmigiana with, bit with it, but uh, you can just eat as it is and it's just uh, as lovely. The first thing I'll do, I'll remove my little fritter for later. And as the chicken is nice and loose, I will be putting it all close together because I'm going to be covering it in sauce. You can also layer this, a bit like a parmigiana, a normal parmigiana by the way. So, um, but I, it's only two of us, so I will only do one layer. But you could do multiple layers and I'll be just uh, as normal. <laughs> and I'll be getting the tomato sauce ready. This is 300 milliliters of uh, passata and uh, I'll add a little pepper and a tiny little amount of salt. And also add uh, more basil. This is all from cold, by the way. Put your chicken back on uh, the worktop and uh, with the help of a spoon start uh, covering uh, the chicken with uh, the passata. And be as generous as you like, even if you have got more passata than what uh, you need, it doesn't really matter. There isn't a rule. I think uh, this is one of those dishes, the more tomato sauce, the better. <laughs> the more to mop up with the bread later. Wonderful, we're nearly nearly there. And uh, I have grated uh, some uh, parmesan cheese now and uh, this is where you need to be fairly generous because it is a parmigiana after all. So here is another 45 grams of cheese. You can use less if you wish or you can use more but I think um, uh, more than 45 or 50 grams it might be a little bit more overpowering. And the very last ingredient, just like uh, a normal parmigiana with uh, aubergines, it's uh, a little bit of uh, mozzarella. This is uh, one uh, bowl of fresh mozzarella which I have sliced. I have to say it looks beautiful already. <laughs> and I'm going to be popping it back in the oven now for a further 15 minutes but this time I will lower the temperature by 10 degrees so 180 on a fan oven or 190 if you've got a normal oven. So I'll see you in a little while. I nearly forgot. <laughs> while I wait I'll be munching through my little fritter and I'm going to show you, look how lovely it is. It's a lovely green uh, and yellowy color on the inside and uh, it's really, really soft. So again, you can make this as a meal. They are absolutely delicious. <laughs> mm -hmm. Just in time. Yeah, just like clockwork, you turn up yeah, when food I is ready. smell it through the village. Mmm, yum. I have to say, it looks wonderful. Mm. <laughs> and it smells delightful. Yeah. Good Lord, is that one? Well, no, it's more than one. It's just... Uh... Mm -hmm. Ooh, there you go. <laughs> Let's mm. do it together. Oh, mozzarella is coming back. Yeah. I'm ready. Are you ready? I'm ready. I'm, <laughs> I was born ready. <laughs> but I'm pinching the mozzarella. Now. And some cheese. Mmm, it's really nice actually. I generally don't think that chicken and uh, tomato go well together, but like this, it is really nice. You get the flavor of the chicken because it's done in breadcrumbs and uh, the flavor of uh, the parmigiana. So, very good combo. I've got another little tip for you. As I've got the oven on, I got a couple of uh, bread rolls out of the freezer, partly defrosted them, and then in the last five minutes, put them in and uh, they are <laughs> soft, just like if they are out of the, I suppose they are out of the oven. <laughs> but they are really nice and they're steaming hot and ideal when uh, you're eating something like this because you can uh, do the scarpetta and mm. mop up the juices. So, that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching the video and I uh, hope you make it and I'm sure you will enjoy it. Ciao ciao for now, see you later. Bye.